Joining us now is Proms Jerome Corsi, author, conservative activist, former associate of Roger Stone, and also a key part in Robert Mueller's Russia probe. Jerome, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you. And you may have thought over the recent years that you were in a bizarro world, but now you're now the last 24 hours. <laughs> right. And you were watching Roger Stone come to the microphones right after being indicted, after being arrested. We've seen him very uh, fervently, shall we say, energetically defend himself. You are especially interested... Um, uh, important to this discussion because you are person number one, right? That's correct. Yes, I am. And, and in the mentions of you in this indictment, are all the interactions correct from what you know? Yes, they uh, are completely correct. They conform and are exactly with both the 40 hours of voluntary interviews I did mm -hmm. with the special counselor and also uh, with the book I've written on this, which is Silent No More. Right. And in your book, you also do mention this next point I'm going to bring up. It's also in the indictment. In the indictment, it says August 2nd, 2016, email to Roger Stone. You said, word is friend and embassy plans two more drops, one shortly after I'm back, 2nd of October. Impact plan to be very damaging. Uh, you've been very clear about what word is. Yes. You're saying word is your analysis not somebody that you necessarily had a conversation with related to WikiLeaks. Yes, and possibly my, my self-promotion, making it sound like I had sources. But uh, this was during the uh, 25th wedding anniversary with my wife and family to Italy. Yeah. And I had time, and I, I I've testified and, it's, and I believe I just figured out Assange had Podesta's emails, and I was texting that to Roger and to others. And uh, it was clear to me that uh, I thought I was right. Now, you can call it educated guess, but I was sure I was right. You, sure, you were sure we're right. And some folks are saying, boy, uh, if Jerome could be betting on the stock market, we should be going with him. And <laughs> hence, therefore, the concerns that you really did know, you really did have contact, and that you are not telling the truth about those potential contacts that led you to these statements to Roger Stone. H how do you react to that? Well, in fact, we spent about 20 hours with yeah. the special prosecutor on this exact subject. And we looked at everybody. In fact, I went through and looked at everyone I was in touch with right. through the entire 2016 period. You went and back to an old, uh, an old hard drive is what you did, right? Well, we had an old hard drive. and all, First of all, I'd given all of my computer, the 17-inch the laptop I was working with, the backup system, my emails, my cell phone, my email accounts, username, password. I gave everything voluntarily to the special counselor. And I couldn't find anyone who I was in drive. I mean, I said, well, maybe somebody in direct contact. Maybe I was blocking the idea. Uh, and after searching it, I came back to my original thought, and that was I put it to, I connected the dots. Okay, so let's go back to the Podesta emails uh, that you were just alluding to. Uh, y you know that Roger Stone was saying, quote, we'll soon be Podesta's time in the barrel. He tweeted that, right? Yes. And there are those, like, for instance, earlier, early on today, uh, it, was, it was said, he shouldn't be saying things like that. That's what Nunberg was saying. Hey, Sam, uh, Sam was saying that to him. You shouldn't be tweeting things like that. Stone now claims he wasn't talking about emails uh, from your conversations with him? Well, is, is he telling the truth here? I, what I testified to is my recollection. And my recollection was, I believe it was August 30th, 2016, Roger uh, called me. I was in New York City that day, got back to my home in New Jersey late. Right. The next morning I started working on a, a memo for Roger on Podesta's involvement in Russia and the millions of dollars that Podesta and Hillary made selling, I believe, U.S. military technology to Russia. That was based on Peter Schweitzer's research. Uh, but I considered that to be a cover story because I had not been doing extensive research on that prior to Roger talking to me that evening on August right. 30. And uh, I created this memo as an alternative explanation for Roger. So, so that was my understanding. You were helping him to cover, right? In you, my understanding, you have said that in the past. I've said it repeatedly, and I, I will. That's my honest and you, recollection. And you've also said that you knew that that was a lie. You knew that in this was sense, not the truth. What I've also said, I, yes, that's correct. Yeah. But I've also said in the public relations sense, which I was raised did my entire work going to college in public relations. It, it is a political uh, turn of phrase is what you, you've Precisely. been saying. And People will still say, a lies, a well, lies, you know, a lies. And yeah. I've been consistent with right, that. Right. I've, not, I've not dodged that criticism. Yeah. When I testified before the, well, in this 40 hours, yeah. my intention was to tell the truth. One of the longest amounts of testimony, by the yes, way. Yes, and I was not trying to construct a story right. 
to be favorable to me or fa I wanted to tell the truth. So that you, was hard. You were trying to do that. And, you know, and Jerome. I wanted uh, to do the right thing. You wanted to do the right thing. And you've also said your mind was mush, right? It, yes. That you, you, were ha you, you were remembering things after you went back to the computer. Yes. And that you were allowed to correct your testimony. Repeatedly. But you see that really tough edge of the argument you're trying to make. What is it that you can't remember? which is that which might be seen as a lie or giving untruths through your testimony. That's what you have to, deb you have well, to debate, see, right? It, I'm confident yeah. that I told the truth to the best of my ability. I'm also confident that my memory was terrible. And it was, I said repeatedly to the special counselor, I can't remember. And when I tried to, they say, well, are you reconstructing or are you really remembering or are you inventing? By the end of 40 hours, I couldn't distinguish. But the point is, uh, I went in to tell the truth, right. and, um, and some of the, everything quoted in the indictment right. uh, is accurate. And, and, and so in a recent tweet, uh, you were very clear that you and Roger Stone today are not necessarily on the best terms, that you are not That's happy, correct. and I think if I were to be paraphrasing, you felt that he was defaming you. Why? Well, first of all, I've said these are my recollections, these are my impressions. Yeah. Roger wants to debate, you know, that who's right. You know, well, Roger's entitled to his own perceptions. Mine can be correct for me, and his correct for him, and they can differ. Right. Now, what Roger's wanting to say is because mine differ, and he considers mine to be detrimental to his case, that I'm lying, and he's come after me with this. Well, in an interview with Ari Melber this past week, you remember it, where yes. you sat together on the panel of four yes. individuals. Sam was there. Right. Uh, as Mike Caputo, uh, you ha it was quite a panel. And the three of you had said, well, during your testimony, the main topic of question, of topic right. here, was who? Roger Stone. Roger Stone. Do you believe that the three of you through your testimony, are what, if you will, tighten the noose here for this indictment that came down uh, just this week. Well, it may, it may be. And I'm going to say what's in the indictment is accurate. If called, I will testify to what's there. I won't differ one word from it. It's correct. Now, if that helps Roger Stone or hurts him, mm -hmm. let the chips fall where they may. Oh, oh, when's the last time you've heard from Roger Stone? That you, either an email, a discussion? I made it a point after I got subpoenaed on August 28th made it a point to have no further conversation with Roger in any way. In any way. In so any way. since then, Jerome, you've had more time to think clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and as we've watched some of the headlines, the reporting that's come out from yes. some of the finest uh, journalistic institutions in the country, do you now believe that here Roger Stone did in some way work, collude here with WikiLeaks uh, with Russia vis-a-vis -vis, uh, WikiLeaks here? Uh, I think he must have had contact, yes. But it wasn't through me, because I've had no contact of any kind, direct or indirect, with Assange or WikiLeaks. And, I'll, and in fact, Assange recently issued a statement in which he affirmed that, mentioning me by name. Yeah. What makes you believe that now since... August, again, was the last time you had any specific contact with him. What was the one point that kind of flipped your thinking to say, yes, I do believe now that Roger Stone did collude in some way? Well, I said, I believe that Roger had contact with Julian Assange, some way or other, directly or indirectly. And I don't know the extent of it. I was not involved in that. From reading the indictment, it sounds like uh, Credico was much more involved in that than I was. Talking about Credico, you've heard some of the threats that were made against him uh, as he was going through the process of giving testimony. Um, and it's, it's clearly written out in the indictment as well. For you here, Jerome, did you ever have any discussion? Did you hear at all from uh, Roger Stone, directly or indirectly, as you were going through these 40 hours, the extensive amount of time that you were spending there with the Mueller team? I had no contact with Roger at all through that period of time. And I made no contact with him, and he made no effort to contact me. And I wanted no contact. I was very determined to give honest testimony and not to be influenced mm -hmm. or not to be considered to be witness tampering or allow anybody to right. witness tamper with me. Has anybody else reached out to you from him about that? No. I've been very insistent, mm -hmm. Richard, to want to give honest testimony and to be meticulous about this. Now, my problem is my memory at 72 years old of these events is admittedly very poor. And the special counselor, even when they came to wanting to give me a plea, yeah. 
the plea they wanted me to plea to was the first day's testimony when I hadn't seen the emails and they allowed me to amend it. So I was not going to plea that I knowingly and willfully gave them information I knew to be false because I didn't. And you were telling uh, Ari Melbert they weren't happy. They weren't happy. Well, no. we're now here on a different day. They're probably less happy. Uh, they have put out another indictment, the Mueller team has. Do you believe now when we look at what you're saying is forgetfulness? That is no longer even close to that category for the Mueller team, and that they're even closer here to an indictment. You said you don't want to die in jail. Uh, I think um, it's less likely, not more likely, that I'd be. Why? Because as I read the indictment, it's clear they're not accusing me of doing anything wrong, and I did nothing wrong. Uh, the this was in uh, November that they were talking about me. Jerome, there could be deal. more. This is just Look, one indictment for one individual. I can't Roger Stone. predict what they're going to do, yeah. and I won't predict what right. they're going to do. But I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I think it would be. There's less basis now, and I'm confident that I did go in to tell the truth, and that the allow. The, if you look at the record, which you know you've not seen, yeah. the number of times I pleaded with them that I can't remember, that I had to modify, uh -huh. and they allowed me to modify the testimony, yeah. is an indication that, yes, my memory was terrible, but I was not intending to give them false information, knowingly and willfully, mm -hmm. with an intent to deceive them. I it, did not do that. And understandably here, Jerome, it sounds like you're hoping more than you know what will be happening in the, in the coming uh, sir, it's, weeks I, I, I neglected to take the... Um, the you know, the crystal ball course at Harvard. I wish I had. <laughs> I've heard you say that before. I really wish I had. I've heard, you say that. I've heard you say that before. We all want to take that class when and if you should teach it or anybody I, I else. I don't think I, I'll be teaching I, it. I, I will, well, don't say, <laughs> never say I never, my friend. I have no plan to teach uh, it. You know, since you clearly know Roger Stone better than I do here, it, he, we see a lot of confidence on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. We see something that's very atypical. An individual who's been indicted, who's been arrested, could face 20 years in prison, coming forward same day, same morning, and then the next day, talking on all the primetime shows, very uncommon here. Behind the scenes, when he is sitting with the investigators, the prosecutors, which you've done extensively, what do you think would perhaps l make him lean towards giving information that is not favorable to President Trump? He's, he said he will, he will not do that, but Behind doors is a different thing. See, so you're going at, again at the crystal ball question. I can't predict what Roger's going to do. And uh, I really don't have an insight directly into Roger's character that deeply. Uh, Roger's going to do what he wants to do. And right now, I, would, I think the judge may, this particular judge he's drawn, put a gag order on, Rush, on Roger. I don't expect he's going to be able to be this vocal with the press for long. But in terms of his determination to go through the, the case, I think he will go through the trial. So you were reading through this word by word as well. Just listening to what Roger's saying. And Roger's saying as well. Roger he, said he's yes. going to go through the trial. Uh, you saw here in the indictment uh, the mention of a, a senior official, right? A of a senior official. official, yes. That's right, Se senior campaign official. Yes. Um, who do you believe that might be for, for, for Roger here? I, I don't know. W would I it mean, be the president? No, I mean, I think the only thing I can, and this again is entirely just speculation on my part, sure. is that there were discussion with Steve Bannon was mentioned. So what I, my mind leapt to without it being able to justify it or prove it would be Bannon. And I just don't know if that's the case. But I don't think it would be the president because I, but it, again, I don't know. You're going to have to ask Roger. Uh, what would you say to Roger right now? Tell the truth because the special prosecutor, while I believe and have filed suit against them for various issues, including what I think is illegal electronic surveillance, I think it's leaking to the grand jury information to the press on me, and I think their techniques in interrogating me were abusive, criminally abusive. I think it's uh, no American should have to go through what I went through. That's why I wrote the book Silent No More. Will he at tell the, the, will at he the same time, uh -huh. Roger should not underestimate the extensiveness of this investigation. The special prosecutor should be assumed to have everything. I handed over everything, right. and uh, I'm sure they had more than I handed over. I finish with this. Um, who, what was the second, you said during your 40 hours, it was Roger Stone, Roger Stone, Roger Stone. What was the second name that was the most common you were talking about? Well, really, I think Roger Stone, in terms of my, 
a name. Sure, sure, sure. But the reason being. why I ask is because then the official transcripts were requested by the Mueller team from, uh, at least in this case, uh, for, for about Roger Stone. And yes. then here he is indicted. That's why I want to know what, what's the second most... There really wasn't... I mean, there were name. other issues they wanted to cover, but the focus was on Roger Stone and then, of course, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. And I, the last 20 hours, especially if you read Silent No More, you'll see it detailed. And that book is accurate and consistent with what's said in the indictment. Uh, it was about any possible contact I might have had in 2016 that could no. have fed me information about Julian Assange, and I couldn't find any. Some have been critical of what's in this indictment and said, well, this so much as gives us a summary of an individual that acted like a traitor. What would be your reaction to those criticisms of who Roger Stone might be based on this particular summary? Uh, traitor is such a hard term, and I don't see that. Roger was as all of us were. Julian Assange, on July 22, 2016, he dumped 40,000 emails on Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She resigned. Everybody coming in, the Democrats, to the convention in Philadelphia. Assange said almost immediately he had more emails. We were all wondering, anyone in journalists, anyone involved in the, uh, the campaigns, what does Assange have? And that's why I was trying to figure it out. I think in this trip, this vacation, to Italy, I had time to think about it, and I connected the dots, and I turned out to be remarkably right. Did you leave your time in Italy going a bit further uh, as you looked at what Roger Stone, what this in entire investigation might mean for you? Because I, I imagine you're looking at just day to day, hoping you don't get that knock on that door, in this case, uh, a battering ram at the door. Well, see, look, I trust in God. There's no reason they should batter my door. I've told the truth, and I've worked to tell the truth. This indictment shows I've done nothing wrong. I think it's less likely now that they would indict me. I think it looks like they are uh, planning to use me as a witness one way or the other. I wouldn't think they'd want to undermine my credibility in that process. And I'm going to continue telling the truth. As I told you, everything said about me as person number one in this indictment, I'll affirm is true. Seeing yourself in black and white as person number one was probably an experience within itself, Jerome Corsi. Well, it's always, uh, I mean, you don't want to be person number one in anything in these legal things. But again, what, it, what encouraged me was I was not accused of doing anything wrong. And that's very important to me. And I think if the special prosecutor had been coming after me, they'd have found something in there to undermine my credibility or suggest I was involved in wrongdoing. They did not do so. Jerome Corsi. Thank you so much for spending your time, author, political commentator, activist, and much more. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, Richard. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.